Okay, so here's the next thing. The biggest challenge that, probably the biggest challenge entrepreneurs have is time management. It's getting everything you have to get done in the time you have to do it. And not feeling like you're driving yourself crazy, burning it out at both ends. Uh, what I call the big diseases of entrepreneurs. Burnout, rust out, and blow up. <laughs> Right? I mean, burnout is you just, you, you, you work too long, too many hours, burning the candle at both ends, and you don't, and by the way, what's interesting, this is why you have to be into prevention. Dr. Ed will tell you this, because the moment your body quits will be a surprise. The minute you can't get out of bed in the morning because you're not, your mojo has up and gone, it's, it's sometimes that happens in unpredictably. And you go, what happened? And that was because your inner self said, I've had enough of this, I'm out of here. And uh, there's a wonderful analogy in, the, in uh, the Dan and Matt Heath's book called Switch, How to Make Changes When Change is Difficult. They do the metaphor of the driver, the elephant, and the path. And they said, you know, in, in, li in life, your, your conscious mind is your driver. It's picking the destination. It says, I want to be this, I want to accomplish this. It's setting your goals. That's all up in your analytic mind. But the elephant is your emotions. And if the elephant, if you don't convince the elephant that this, this journey you're on is the right one, it's not going to move. And you ever try and move an elephant? <laughs> you can drive it, you can beat it, you can, you, know, you can cajole it, and it goes, oh well, I'm not going. Oh, there's peanuts at the end. Oh, okay. You know, so that's your motivation. You've got to get your mojo cranked into your goals. That's the motivation, so, because otherwise it doesn't move. And then the path is what we're talking about here. So how do we get to there from here? We have a map. It's the five disciplines. It's the maps. Uh, it's, it's the uh, Master Networks University. So the thing is that you have to uh, really avoid this burnout. Rust out is where you're just tired of doing the same old thing again and again. And there's another thing to be aware of. You need to build growth and a, tra a trajectory in your business or you will get bored to death. And you may be able to persist for a while doing the same old, same old, but there'll be a day when you just, you're so bored you want to, you know, go do something crazy and guess what, you probably will. <laughs> Not good. Blowout is when you leave but do damage on the way out. You say things you wish you'd never said. You burn relationships you shouldn't have burned because you just let it get to the raw edge. So the reason I'm saying all this is because learning how to manage your time and priorities is a key. And what you want to build is a rhythm in your productivity, a rhythm that you can marathon run forever. Just, you know, you're not a sprint and quit, sprint and quit kind of person. You're a marathoner. You're in it for the long run. Now, the way you do it is this. First things first. So what you do is you really get good at what matters and what doesn't. It's called the 2080 rule. Pareto's law, the 2080 principle. 20% 20 of the people will do 80% of the business. Okay, I want to be in the 20%. Let's do that. But here's the other thing. 20% of my activities will lead to 80% of my results. And write that down for yourself. I want you to write that down because it's such a it's 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 one of those BFOs, right? A blinding flash of the obvious. You know, it's amazing how in life BFOs will guide us. You know, you go, oh my God, I can't believe that. You know, but it's like you know it. But so, so just remember that 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 um, that it's really that the 2080 is that 20% of what I put energy to will lead to 80% of my results. So I, in my life, want to get clear about what are my what's my 20%. Week, another name for those is your dollar productive activities. So in business, it's your dollar productive activities, lead generation, lead follow-up, uh, sales meetings, meaning meetings with clients, uh, customer service, direct customer service contact time, working on your business, not just in your business, getting training. Those are kind of all, you know, what I call high dollar productive activities. What was that acronym? Blinding flash of the obvious. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, he's good. 
He'll be using that word. Yeah. yeah. So by the way, it's it's that's why that's why a lot of great learning isn't isn't new. It's just like it all of a sudden crystallizes for you. You go, boy, there I got that. So so time. So what you want to do now is say, are my priorities on my calendar? That's your question. See, that's a timing question. Great entrepreneurs have a great sense of timing. That doesn't mean that they do more time. Because that's, you know, there's only so many hours you can work, and there may, you know, you may need to make hay while the sun shines. There may be times where you get, you put in longer hours and all that, but that can't be your MO. So the MO really is, am I doing what's really important, and is it on my calendar? Because understand this, until something hits your calendar, you're not committed to it. You aren't. You'll then kind of let it fit if it fits. And this is why you put your exercise program on my calendar, right? Because having a time I go and work with you in my exercise means I get that done. If I have an adjustment every week and I have that on my calendar, it means I keep myself, you know, in upright, good position. And, and, and so, so the thing to remember, here's the, here's the thing. See, if somebody said to you, um, we, you know, can you come over on an appointment I would like to have this afternoon? And you go, boy, I'd love to, but I'm picking my child up from school at 3. I have to pick them up at 3. You say, oh, would you want to go and play golf today? No, I, I would love to, yes, but I have a hair appointment at that time. So all your have-tos hit your calendar. And so here's the question. Do you have your dollar productive activities on your calendar? And what a time block, underlying the phrase time block is from uh, entrepreneurs, it's a time I've set aside as an appointment with myself to do a high priority task. So it may be when I get my marketing material ready. It may be when I make calls to past clients and ask for referrals. It, it may be when I uh, call my currently active clients to update them on what's happening. Uh, it may be when I do my weekly planning session. So whatever it is, if it's a dollar productive activity, your question is, have I blocked for time for it? Because if you don't, what will happen? It won't get done. Thank you. Because it just gets put off. And then what happens is, we'll talk about more about this in just a second, what happens is uh, you, you fill the time with less productive work. In fact, I want you to write down Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law. Otherwise known as the day before vacation law. And that means that work expands to fill the time available for it. Work, and Parkinson was a, a studier of, 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 of factory processes, but he said, work expands to fill the time available for it. If you have a task and you give yourself three hours to do it, it'll take you three hours. If you only have half an hour, you'll still probably get it done. And like I say, it's the day before vacation phenomenon, right? You got all this stuff to do. You're leaving tomorrow morning on a two-week vacation. What, are, what do you look like that last day? Productivity, powerhouse, person, right? I mean, you're just getting it done. You're delegating it. You're giving it to somebody else. You're deciding it can't be done. You're getting calls back. I mean, it's just a boom, 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 boom. And the thing is, if you were like that even half of, any, of every day, you could, you could relax the other half. <laughs> do whatever you want. In fact, that's the key. The key is... Time block half your day and enjoy the rest. Make that note to yourself. It time block half your day for dollar productive activities and then ride the wave. Just ride the wave of serendipity and responsiveness and what's on the docket and who needs to talk to you and customer service. Appointments probably that you've already set with others. So one other thing to do as you manage your time is to say, what does my ideal week look like? If I could really live an ideal day or an ideal week, what would it look like? And what you do is you graph it out. You take a whole, you know, up at, up at 6, to bed at 10, and here's, here's, here's my day. Here's how I start it. Here's what I do. Time with the family, read time, exercise time, uh, breakfast time, commute time, organizational time at work. Blah, blah, blah. You build the day. Um, and then to do the same thing for a week. What does my ideal week look like? Because there's a rhythm to a week, and then there's always a rhythm to a month. There's probably a rhythm to a year, too. Uh, and make a note to yourself in your ideal uh, planning, and that is put your vacations on your calendar first. 
put your, you, if you're going to coordinate it when kids are off school, you're going to coordinate it when you want to take a long weekend, uh, and just get that on your calendar, and then use the rule we say, which is if you replace, you no, if you erase, you must replace. So if you have taken a long weekend, but then things get busy and you can't take the weekend, then you have to schedule another one right away. If you erase, you must replace. So do vacations first, and then we'll talk about the other. So what do you do about your ideal day is you, you get it in mind. This would be an ideal day. Then you, then you lead your real life and say, how did it compare with my ideal day? I mean, how did it? Where did I miss it? What, what, you know, what, where did things lag over? What, what got left out? Because your ideal day, write this down, is target practice. It's for the use of your time. It's like target practice. It's saying, here's my target. If I could live an ideal day, this is what it would look like. For me, right now. It's always, it's always kind of now bound because it, that, what that is in a year may change. The next thing on here is this idea of the four quadrants. It comes from, uh, from Stephen Covey's book, uh, The uh, uh, Do First Things First. It was his second book, First Things First. And he really got into time management. And so I want you to picture this. Draw it on your sheet. Draw a, um, a box, a square. Okay, Just draw a square. And then in the middle of the square, draw a vertical line. Okay, up and down. And then in the middle of the square the other way, draw a horizontal line. So now what you've created is a box with four quadrants in it. Two on top, two on the bottom, two on the left, two on the right. You can see how that looks. Now the upper left-hand one, put the number one. The one next to it, put the number two. The, to the right of it, number two. Down below number one, put number three. And the final one in the lower right-hand corner, put number four. And what Stephen Covey says is, if you look at your time as divided into four quadrants, there's a place you want to spend it. And it has to do with this. So next to, next to where it has um, uh, one and two, right to the left of that, put the word important and put an arrow across. So it means that, that, that whatever is in, in box one and two is important. Then, above one, and down below it, that would be three, put at the top, put the word urgent, urgent, and draw an arrow from top down. So that what we know is that anything in box one and three is urgent. Anything in box one and two are important. Okay, this gives us a way to look, because really in our lives, our activities are either urgent or important, or not, either, either side. So what, what uh, Stephen Covey is saying is that uh, bur putting out fires, you know, in your life where you say, I'm just, oh, just, I'm just putting out fires, you're in quadrant one. It's urgent and important. You've got to get at it, and if you don't, you're going to pay a price. Right? It's the irate customer. Uh, it's the thing we're up on a deadline. They were expecting it this afternoon, and oh my God, it's not ready, and so we're scrambling to get it together because it's got to get delivered this afternoon. Uh, so anything that's in box one is urgent and important. Over in box two are the things that are important but not urgent. So no one's saying you got to do that, but it's still important. So that would be like coming to training. That would be like doing your business plan. That would be like building your five disciplines, your skill. That would be going and taking care of your health, eating right. Planning a vacation would be all, all of that would be in quadrant two. Do you, you get that feel? Let's go down to quadrant three. Not important, but urgent. Checking emails, returning phone calls, um, writing memos. Uh, you, know, so, you know, somebody knocks on your door, giving them time. Somebody knocks on your door. Dr. Ed, I gotta speak with you for a second. I got an urgent problem. And the minute you say yes, what quadrant are you in? Three. Well, three and maybe one, but we don't know yet. Right? So you know, there's a fire. Okay, one. You know, but but uh, so 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 the thing is that takes a lot of your attention. Things take things in that box take a lot of attention, and you can give them too much. Checking your Facebook, checking email. Technology gets in three a lot. 
Technology creates a sense of urgency that's not really there, but you're making it urgent, right? Quadrant four is neither important or urgent, and that's called killing time, right? So quadrant, you know, if you kind of think of it in metaphors, you know, quadrant one is putting out fires. Quadrant two is rubber on the road. Okay, you're making traction, you're really making progress. Quadrant three is, um, uh, oh, what did I have that one? Uh, no, no, spinning wheels, spinning wheels. It's spinning, you know, okay. you get at the end of a day in quadrant three, and what does it go? It's like, how was today? I was busy. How do you feel about it? Not very good, I didn't get done what I wanted to. Oh, a great, another great day in quadrant three. Right? And people who say, when they say, how are you doing, and they go, busy, 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 where are they spending their life? One and three. One and three. Right? Now, quadrant four is killing time. Right? And, and that's where you're just, you know, vegging in front of the TV. If you're a guy like me, you're watching NFL football. If I'm watching one game for my favorite team, it might be quadrant two. That I plan to watch. No. But if I watch it from 11 a.m. until 7 o'clock, or you know, now they have a Sunday night game until like 11 o'clock, number four, I'm deep in four, right? And so I call it, if you do the, the one four dance, picture this, is the one, is, I call it the crash and burn, right? You burn, you crash, you burn, you crash. And alcoholics are in the burn and crash, okay? No, I mean, really, quadrant four is escapism. I mean, I'm not... Okay, the, what's the difference between doing something that's just for fun and quadrant four? I do it intentionally, it's quadrant two. So if I do something that's fun, take the kids to a movie, you know, go on a vacation that I planned, man, I'm writing quadrant two. But if I just say, man, I've had enough, I'm out of here, where am I? Quadrant four, probably. So what you're doing is, just think of this for yourself. I want to think in my life, what are my quadrant two activities that I may be neglecting? Because often what happens is if you're planfully in quadrant two, most things don't get to quadrant one. You don't get customers calling you with complaints that are now urgent and important because you got back to them before it was a complaint, right? You're not going to get bypass surgery Urgent and important, because you actually went to exercise classes, quadrant two. Do you see what I'm saying? So the right behavior in quadrant two avoids quadrant one and three. And four is irrelevant. Right? Does that make sense? Kind of a, it's kind of a neat way to mentally look at time. Now, the other thing to, is to say in your business, you want to you organize things that happen frequently on a regular basis. So you want to give them a spot on the calendar. So staff meetings should always be, and preferably for, uh, for, um, for entrepreneurs, they're stand-up meetings, because you want to keep them short. Right? We have meetings that are for uh, sharing information, collaborating together, and creativity. So sharing, sharing what's going on and collaborating are stand-up meetings. It doesn't take long, we're just checking with each other. Creative meetings might be more sit down, take a retreat, two hours brainstorming, how can we improve our business, that kind of thing. But the point is that you put all the things on your calendar that repeat. So for example, uh, the day that you're gonna review the, the past month's financials. Okay, that's the fifth business day of the month, whatever that is, you set it, or maybe it's the first Tuesday. If you're doing a promotional seminar, like you're doing an investor seminar, it's the second Wednesday night at seven o'clock at the Marriott every week, I mean every month. So now you, your business has a rhythm. It's interesting, if you promote a marketing event and you do it the same uh, week and night of the month, and by the way, you don't give set a date, what do you say? The second Wednesday night. It might be a different date in different months, but the second Wednesday night is when I do my promotional information meeting about uh, exercise and wellness, about how to, how to have a, a a, um, a comfortable, well-adjusted body. You know, I mean, that could, whatever information, because that's a great way to generate interest in leads and be of service is to have, do that the same night because then your, your website can just say, remember, sign up for our second Tuesday wellness seminar. It's always there. 
So what you find is when you do it repetitively, it makes it efficient, and your marketing of it becomes efficient, and your business has a rhythm. Same thing with when do, when do orders go out? Let's say we're in a shipping business. Well, we say any order that comes in you know, uh, by Tuesday gets shipped on Wednesday. Anything that comes in on Wednesday and Thursday gets shipped on Friday. And so we just, we have, there's only two times we ship. Or if I have a mailer that's going out to my database, it always goes out on the third Thursday of every month. I mail, I mail a message to my database. The minute you have that, it starts to back you up into quadrant two. Because I know I have that coming up, so now I'm planful about getting the material ready for it and getting it to the person that's going to mail it out. And then on that day, it's not urgent at all. It's just in the rhythm. So understand that you want to build your calendar should show your repetitive activities. Uh, and everyone should know what they are in your business. So it makes everything planned, predictable, and on purpose. That, that's your goal. Now the other thing is, use the first three to four hours of your day to make your day. We said it earlier about time blocking, but I would say get a look at the way you start your day. See, for me, for many years, I, because it's in my family, uh, I, I deal with depression. I mean, I just have had a I'm cyclical deal with depression. I've learned that it's really like the weather. Sometimes it's dark, cloudy, rainy day, you know. But what I find mostly over time is that um, if I have something really scheduled that, that I, with other people early in the day, I'm never depressed. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I wake up and I got something to do. So I'm there. So the thing for you is to manage, how do you launch your day? It's just a question to you. How do you launch it? Do you get your exercise early? Do you eat a healthy breakfast? Do you spend some loving, hugging time with your family? Uh, do you have a kind of a, a, a planning meeting with your staff the first 15 minutes to launch everyone's day and be on track together? So just put a star, put it under, under, under launch, just underline the word launch, because, because the, the toughest thing about momentum is getting it started. And a launching strategy gets every day kicked off in a good way. Then you can use the rest of the day as you will. And I find out about you. When I've gotten a bunch of productive stuff, how do you, how do you feel when you get a bunch of productive stuff done early? Pumped. You, you know, now you're ready to go on for more. Bring it on. You know, it's that kind of thing. But if you're starting slow and you start slow, then in a way you're almost mm, resisting things that are coming. So it's kind of building momentum. That's really what it is. And then the other one is the final one, which is teach everyone the four quadrants and the first things first. The idea of dollar productive activities. Everyone has a 2080 in their job. As an as a, as a, a, a entrepreneur, a lead generation and generating more business may be in your top 20. But your admin is not there in their top 20, but theirs may be getting out the mailers on time, building up your database, getting you the reports you need, right? That's their 20. So everyone has a 28. 